Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get started at 6.05. This may be our group, which is fine. We'll continue on. Um, uh, it might just be shorter, which is also good. <laughs> so, um, as usual, we will start with good things. Um, it sounds like, if you don't mind me announcing, you had a good thing, or you announced. Yeah, that was good. Thank you for a new job. That is good. What about some other good things? I guess the best thing is that we're all alive today. We survived the virus one more day. <laughs> celebrate that for sure. One more? I have one. My baby's going to be five in a couple weeks. So Yay. that's exciting. Like, we'll start kindergarten soon. <laughs> <laughs> this is exciting. Get a, yeah. get a pay raise. <laughs> exactly. Get a pay raise. All right, so we'll go to the floor. Yes. Yeah. February 7th. Oh, my awesome. February 8th. What we're going to do tonight is a little bit of a recap or overview of how the education system comes up with the required education or instruction that we have to teach kids in all grade levels, okay? Um, specifically how that relates to us as Shaq, and I know we've gone over this before, um, in September, but we're going to kind of get a little bit more detailed because we've done a little bit more investigation and found um, some interesting new things that Stormy is going to um, share with us in a little bit. Um, and then we'll get more detailed and actually review specifically our fifth grade program. If you remember when we talked in our previous meetings how um, it's the human sexuality instruction piece. Um, that House Bill 1525 has um, kind of charged the shack into really looking into and uh, reviewing it and recommending those curriculums to the school board. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, I think what I will do is... Um, Stormy, if you don't mind. This is Stormy Lamont. Dr. Stormy Lamont. <laughs> she deserves that credit. She works hard for it. Um, and I will let you explain what your actual title is here just because I'm sorry I'm not good with remembering all those things. But she is more of our guru on like the curriculum side and how all of that works. And then we'll funnel that down and more specifically how it's going to affect us. Thank you, Stacey. So, um, so I am the uh, Executive Director of Curriculum Instruction and Professional Development here this morning. And so I get to work with um, learning specialists that specialize in the different areas. We've got math, science, social studies, um, English. And part of our responsibility for our science learning specialist is that she helps cover our health and science teams as well as our PE teams. So the TEAK is what the state has put out as the, the verbiage, the really detailed noun and verb correlation of what we're expecting to teach. And so part of, um, as we're going through this process, this year is an adoption year for curriculum in the area of health and PD. And we find that most of our human sexuality TEAKs fall into our health curriculum. So what that means is that the state reviews different things, different publishers can submit resources, and then those are reviewed, and then uh, districts can pick what they want to adopt. But for our SHAC committee, we're not reviewing all of the health 
products of looking at that we're only looking at this one particular portion over the human sexuality. Um, and so what we're looking at is how those ticks have changed from the past adoption to the new adoption that will come into play this fall. So those ticks aren't actually being taught in our class just yet. This is our time to review them, get to know them, and then look at the appropriate uh, resources to support that implementation in the classroom. Um, so Stacey just wanted me to pause and, and just share a little bit when we say TEKS, if you're not in the educational world, that's a really strange word. What does that mean? And that's that very detailed um, description of what that teacher is expected to teach. And the nice thing about um, finding some of these uh, resources is that it allows us, specifically with the shack, to have that community input on what, what we're going to use to um, support our teachers in that implementation of that. Um, was there another aspect of that you wanted me to share on? No, I think okay. that's perfect. Okay. So, um, you don't want me to stand up or can I sit? No. You can sit. So, specifically with uh, what we are, are kind of being charged to do, and again, we'll talk about this in September, but as a review, House Bill 1525 came out in the last legislative session. Um, it went into effect September 1, and it basically says that uh, any, that the board shall select the specific content of a district's instruction in human sexuality. So, they, and then there, it kind of breaks it down. We're going to give you those actual policies to look at in just a bit. Um, it breaks it specifically down to any time a school district is going to teach anything in regards to human sexuality. They want this committee, okay, the state of Texas says this committee needs to review those materials to then recommend which one we feel is appropriate for all of our students in the district. Um, and then we present those recommendations at a school board meeting. The board then has to take an action with that, okay? And they can look at that and say, our chef recommended this. That way they know we've reviewed it from a community parent standpoint. But then they have some stipulations themselves, and I'll give you a copy of that as well in just a little bit. So they have to then go, okay, does this instruction apply and appropriate to the grade levels in which it is um, intended to be for? And does it also uh, follow these certain laws? Okay, if there's five of them. Only four of them really relate to our school district. But, um, so then if all of those align and match, then they adopt that instruction. Okay, so all the hard work that the learning specialists have done to bring us the, the curriculum to say, please review these. We feel like these are going to align with all the pieces. Then we review it and go, well, okay, out of these options, or not, sometimes there's not that many options, but we review what they sent us and we go, yeah, we feel like this is good for our students and we'll be good um, and follow the instructional piece for, for our students for the district as a group. Then it's still up to the board to say, yes, it's official, we adopt this curriculum, and that is what we will then teach at all the different appropriate levels starting next school year. Um, so, I think I covered both of the breakdown and the goal of SHAC. So before we move on, are there any questions about the process? Sometimes, I think at our level, we get caught up and bogged down in the process. I know that is true for me, right? Because as, as the district health and wellness um, nurse, I, I don't always know about TEKS and all that good stuff. So I rely on my other experts to say, okay, that's what this means, and then I have to kind of incorporate and facilitate um, what they're bringing us in the group that we have here with Shaq to say, this is how we're gonna make it all good. Um, any other discussion on that process? 
Mr. Beard, do you want to expand it all into what has been brought forth to the board so far? A little bit about the um, resolution and those sorts of things. Uh, it, it's really, really simple. When the, uh, this is Rick Beard. He is the Chief of Human Services for Ash. Yeah, it was, it, Stacey kind of alluded to it when she was uh, talking through the process, but uh, when new legislation comes down, Austin. And then we'll take that and break that down. And this new policy is the PHAA, legal and global. And so what it did was it created a resolution where we took to the board, basically what they said, they commissioned this group, the Shack to have two open public meetings and then for us to come up with the recommendation to the board. And as Stacy said, that process comes from the curriculum people, the experts in the field, to present that curriculum to us, to present and for us to review them and present them to the board. My part of this really is, uh, you know, health services kind of falls underneath my umbrella, but Stacey's also as our director, and so she's taking the lead on this as well as Stormy in her curriculum side. So it's a joint effort among many departments to make sure that we vet this out to the best for our ability to come up with the best thing to share with our uh, implement and share with our students. Um, so uh, it is very, uh, it is a legal requirement. So that's what we're here today is to start that process. So, so as Stormy told us, um, there are new teaks that came out, and the way that they're worded is pretty specific. Um, so a lot of what we previously had done really does not 100% align with these new teaks. There is one program that we feel like, as of right now, that we have really looked into that does, and that's that fifth grade um, human growth and development or puberty video. We sent those links out for everybody to review. So today what we're gonna do is go ahead and delve into that one really closely um, here, have some discussion points, and then um, kind of put our recommendation or stamp on just that one for now, okay? Um, I think that in the future we'll be meeting more, um, obviously, um, when we get more of those curriculums at the other grade levels to align with the teaks that we feel are going to be appropriate, and we'll come back together and look at those a little more closely, okay? So I will send that over to Amanda to kind of go into a little bit more detail on um, the Procter & Gamble video, or uh, curriculum. So this is the <clears throat> curriculum that we're currently using. Okay. So this is the curriculum that we're currently using for the fifth graders. Um, as we mentioned before, it's usually done in the spring. Um, the nurse gets some help from maybe a PE teacher or a male teacher on campus, and we separate the fifth grade students by their sex, so girls with the girls and the boys with the boys, um, and watch the video and have an opportunity for them to have questions um, and have a teacher or a nurse there with them. So let me just... Oh, you already have it. Oh, here it is. Okay. So this is the program we had sent you the link for before. Let me see if you, you already downloaded it too, Stacey, is it? Yes, okay. So one of the things with this program is that the law states that we have to allow parents to opt in and not opt out, meaning that you have to give permission, basically, for your child to participate in this program. We're not just gonna show it to everyone unless you say it's okay. Um, so they provide, Procter & Gamble provides us with like a sample letter. I believe Horny ISD, we use our own that we have. But we send this out to all fifth grade students, um, you know, a few weeks before we're gonna present it so that the parents have an opportunity to re review the program as well. They could review it at home, watch the actual video that we show. So I just wanted to point that out to you. And then the other thing um, is if you happen to look at this on your own when you go home, we recommend that you look here at the teacher section it really just has more detailed information about what the curriculum says. Um, and just to download right here where it says um, the puberty education program, 
So that's what I'm going to show you now. We have it here, and this is the instructor's guide. So this is the actual curriculum that we use. Table of contents. I'm just going to go through it um, fairly quickly. So the overview is here. Like I said, we ask for parents to review it first and make that decision for their child if they want to see it. Um, and then it just starts with every body is changing and goes into puberty. Um, what is puberty? And then it talks about the changes during puberty, female and male, and then those shared changes that they may have. And then they talk about how to deal with all of these changes. Um, for the girls, they talk about breasts and wearing a bra, um, skin care, that's for, for both the boys and girls, they talk about skin care in the video. Um, acne, brushing your teeth, hair care that you're gonna start to sweat, um, body odor, things you can do for that. And then they get specific about reproductive systems. So for the boys video, it's obviously going to focus more on the boys and the girls video is going to focus on the girls, but it discusses the changes um, to boys and why they're going through puberty so that when they're adults that they could become fathers. Um, it does talk about that. And then girls, it discusses her period and menstruation, the whole cycle and why we have a period what her body's doing when she is having a period. Again, more, this is more frequently asked questions about a period. Um, and then pads and tampons, it talks about pads for the fifth graders, no tampons at this point. Um, how to choose a pad. Oh, I guess it does, sorry, it does talk a little bit about tampons as well. Toxic shock syndrome and discharge. This is all for the girls. This will not be discussed within the boys video. Uh, still talking about our pads. Period tracker, it has some resources for girls. And usually when we do this, these videos, they provide us with pads to give to the girls to take home, as well as deodorant for the boys um, to take home. Um, and then it does talk about sex and gender um, and making healthy choices, eating well, being active, getting enough sleep, all of the things that your body needs while it's going through puberty. Um, it discusses relationships and healthy relationships. Um, <clears throat> so, and then this is just a video discussion guide. And there's a test. We don't give the test here. We just watch the video and then be available for any questions. So that's a more in-depth look at, of the curriculum for the fifth grade. So now we have for you just um, some prompts on a piece of paper so that we can have some open discussion and you can give us your recommendations and thoughts on our program. Did I miss anything? No? put this back up. Okay. There it is. So first and foremost, um, from what you have already reviewed and seen on this particular curriculum, would you say that it follows the policy or education code? I have provided you with those as well as the TEKS, okay, for the fifth grade. Specifically under, it starts with 20, yes? Yes, on 20. The, on the um, one that says 115 health TEKS for the fifth grade, under line 20. So, um, all encompassing does this curriculum say answer the question of if we use it does it follow what we are supposed to be teaching or figuring would you say what's one of the things that the teeth is, is charging us to do wherever reproductive health it says they all there's three of them 20 21 and 22 reproductive and sexual health, healthy relationships. 
reproductive and sexual health, personal safety limits and boundaries, and then reproductive and sexual health, anatomy, puberty, reproduction, and pregnancy. So the fifth grade has to follow all the three? Yes. And they asked me, does this program that you just selected? No, I don't like it. So can I, what about the other one that would be, the male has got a wife, why would I even have So that one is not for fifth grade. Okay. Yeah. That one is for other grades. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that one is not for fifth grade. That's for other grade levels. What grade levels? It, Baylor's Got and White currently provides curriculum for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade levels, not fifth. So the TEKS, um, like the ones we so just pretty much described. We're introducing them to this hallway and then we go into the Baylor Scott and White one the following year. For, for other grades. Okay. White okay. nothing has to be. Sorry. So why we can't. So why we can't. Um, because honestly, they, they need the education way before, in my opinion, before fifth grade. Right. And did today, so far. Right. Because they are starting early. Right. Now. As a Because they think that sex is just intercourse. They don't count oral sex. They don't count anal sex. They don't count, uh, what's the other word? Oral anal. Oh, no. Okay. But they don't they don't count for the little boys. You have girls that are giving blowjobs in like third and fourth grade. So is, is that what I've done to help, you know, like it, because honestly this one is is good in the beginning, but then we get down to the end and start, you know, going into some other worldly use instead of sticking straight to the sign. And get, you see what I'm saying? And so uh, yeah. So um, you feel like this one, specifically for the fifth grade, so that's kind of where I'm targeting this particular curriculum for So we have to stick with this one no matter what, you can't. No, nope. oh, it doesn't matter. That. That's what we are discussing right here. Okay. It doesn't address 21 and 20. Okay, so 21 is? The limits, boundaries, yeah. I didn't see yeah. limits, yeah. boundaries. Sexual harassment. I didn't see that they say no to any one on one. I didn't see that one. And, I didn't and then I didn't see where it talks about relationship. exactly relationship. Okay. Healthy. Definitely. Yes. So this one does uh, talk about those points. We just went through it pretty quickly. We did. Um, so and then this is also what you're looking at here. This is the teacher guide, okay? So it's not the video itself where it goes into a little bit more like that. But I would agree with you completely that some of these topics um, are important because it also encompasses that SEL, that socio, uh, social emotional learning. Um, so we definitely need that aspect. So in this particular program, it does encompass some of that. Um, it is a one, it is a one-time program. But some of these other practices that this is alluding to are reinforced yes. throughout the year in health lessons which at this level are also incorporated with PE. So when do they get health? Is that a middle school or a high school course? Health is no longer required. I, I know yeah, that's why I was asking because they don't have to take it. When I was in school, we did. So that was many moons ago. So right now, currently, our PE and our health teaks are combined, and that instruction is done through a PE classroom. So our K-8 PE teachers also have an LCD projector available to them in order to do some of this direct instruction as appropriate. It just seems as though, um, just by just looking at the teacher's guide, that, and, and I know this is a lot of information to cover, mm -hmm. but um, I agree that a lot of 
issues with relationships, boundaries, harassment, safety, respect, and all of those kind of things need to really, since you have their attention, and since you're going to have them in a setting, uh, I would think that you would uh, pay more attention to those type of things. I know you can, because we, that, that uh, guy had more information about the tampons and the <laughs> stuff that it does about you know, that it does and that's the teacher guide like Stacy has said um, the video does go into do a very good job of explaining puberty and the changes to the body it's not quite as in-depth about the tampons and the pads but but um, I don't I don't remember how much time was given to um, to 20 21 and it's, it is important. The reproductive, it seems like it needs to be two settings. One for just the reproductive part and then the other could be in another whole setting. But um, I don't know how, we, how that would work, but I'm just saying. So how long is the whole teaching of, of this program? The program, how long is it? So the video itself is about 20 minutes long, the video. Um, it's available on YouTube to watch. Um, and then after the video is shown, the nurse, who's usually with the girls, um, or the teacher or whatever male role model is with the boys, is available for questions. And a lot of times we, um, one thing to do is to pass out note cards that the students can write their question on so they don't have to, in case they feel embarrassed to ask. And then it can just be, this was a question asked, it doesn't point anyone else out, but they're given an opportunity for a question. So it's approximately, what, 40 minutes? I will start one time in 30 minutes. In the spring. Yes, ma'am. But again, I wanna, I wanna let you know, or keep in mind, this is only one aspect. So the th some of the things that you all are talking about are constantly reinforced throughout the year, right? Like your nutrition stuff throughout the year. Like that um, social-emotional learning aspect of it, the healthy relationships, the risky behaviors. Those are things that are reinforced all year long through the guidance counselors. Again, fifth grade only is what I'm talking about, okay? So the guidance counselors at the element, excuse me, intermediate levels now, um, they will go in and still reinforce these through various programs in a different aspect, not as it completely relates to reproductive anatomy and how that works. And remember when we brought in our IRL teachers, that is a new course for our fifth grade students that they get this over and over daily through an IRL. Okay. And that's actually fifth grade through eighth grade. Yes. That's about to be expanded. I know it's probably the one if you're familiar with that. I know that they're working to write some of the um, life lessons, so to speak, down into the K-4. Right. Um, and then looking at some of the continuation at high school from a perspective of, of some other applicants, looking at the FAFSA, uh, some of the financial implications. It's, it's almost trying to give us some of those um, street smarts, not more than those street smarts. But it, there's a lot in there about character development, conflict resolution, good relationships, having a proper relationship. So it, it's really about just, and it's actually a core curriculum. You know, a lot of districts will have you know, your math, English, social studies, science. So we have added this as core curriculum for our students because it's that important for us to build healthy relationships, to learn how to you know, build character in our students as well. So, and that is embedded to some degree throughout the school year of what we're talking about here. But, but also just remember, correct me if I'm wrong, Stacey, but we're about to undergo a complete review of the curriculum for human sexuality construction. So there's going to be, this is really just fifth grade that we're actually looking at today, but we're hoping to bring to you something a little bit more in depth next time that will be a little more expansive as we embark on what that curriculum looks like next fall. Okay. So there's going to be more information that will be coming as well. Um, so 
have great questions, though. That's yeah, great. that is what we're but, here for. I mean, you, if you don't ask them, then you can't help get you answers. But going forward, this is kind of also a little bit of a exercise or practice for this group to see when we get those other programs available for you to review this is a process in which we're going to to use right we're going to bring you what those are it's your opportunity to poke holes right and express what things you would like to see in these areas um, obviously i mean we're charged with literally this little tiny piece this human sexuality piece which as adults we know means so much more right um, and there are so many other teaks that also kind of incorporate these in different angles um, but it's more specifically where um, on the one of the uh, policies the EHAA that I gave you where the board is charged with adopting any time um, sexuality instruction is given and the law is that you will always promote abstinence over anything. Um, and you can kind of see those others right there. So again, this is just a tiny piece of what the overall, what our kids are learning um, all day in all areas. Um, but this is a kind of an example of what we're doing to adopt this piece. Uh, or excuse me, to recommend to the board to adopt at least this piece of the puzzle. Another good point too is I think some of these particular programs like this one right here, it is just offered the one time, but it's a starting piece right to have a discussion at school especially for those that don't have support systems at home but more importantly a starting piece to have the conversation at home right because we do have those opt-in letters now remember i told you at the beginning of the year when we when we spoke we used to just have opt out but house bill 1525 changed that which I actually kind of like because it tells the parents, hey, look, we're about, you have a fifth grade girl, we're about to have this conversation, okay? For some of you, you may be like, well, my daughter already started her period last year. This is going to be for nothing. Well, it's not for nothing because most of her friends have it yet, right? So it starts that whole support system even within themselves. But that option letter going out allows the parent to go, hey, we're about to do this. So it gets the parent thinking, okay, you're about to do this, helps them to even have that conversation at home. Because they can also look at these resources and see what we're doing so that conversation piece starts. So for me, that's my perspective that I think is, is kind of better. So let me just kind of ask this, or let me pose the question this way. Your, it, for your fifth grade daughter, and I don't, I think most of y'all are young, or yours are older, mine are in high school. Yes. Nice and ten grade. Yes. So if you had a fifth grade, um, let's forget the girls for a minute. If you had a fifth grade boy going in, and you were able to review this curriculum for the boys, um, and get that letter sent home, would you opt in to have your fifth grade boy to participate in this? I was looking at the camera and I don't know if that picture for the boys is on the kids portion. Uh -huh. But I remember when my son, they saw the film. Yeah. And he was out done. He was just like, they made us look at this naked man. Uh -huh. And then what the man was, it was a cartoon. It's an animated Yeah, animated yeah. picture. It wasn't as detailed as that picture right there. Uh -huh. He just had a 
uh, circles where the anatomy was, uh, and pretty much no personality or anything like that. But he, he, he was just like, they made us look at this, and I said, well, they're telling you about puberty, and he was like, I didn't want to see that. I wanted to play small ball. So, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but, you know. yeah. So I, I don't know. Um, maybe the details. I don't. It's probably just going to be uh, dependent on the person who presents. You know, they can make it lively and make it exciting, not something that um, they seem to be afraid to say or whatever, because yes. that makes the difference. If yes. They're squeamish. The kids yes. are going to be laughing and giggling and not paying attention. To it, you know, so. Absolutely. But, yeah, I would ask them. What do you think? Yeah, I would love to. They can ask questions. Sometimes they don't feel comfortable asking the parents, even though we would answer them. Right. So it would still be a starting piece, at least. Yeah. It definitely needs some support. The parents are going to have to support it. Um, I mean, probably not going to agree with every part of it. I don't. I don't know. Um, I wasn't that type of parent. When it was time to talk about it, I probably had already discussed it um, in our way of communicating with each other. I would rather something be um, presented educationally rather than. Somebody to tell on the bus at the back of the bus, right. or, you know, right. in the gym behind the bleachers or something when they're daring to kiss somebody or whatever. Right. I, I would rather an adult, and I'm going to do it, but yeah. another adult or a teacher yeah, to present it, and then you know everybody's getting the same stuff. You know. My experience, I'll just share a quick story. Um, my son is in sixth grade this year, so he had the video last year. And we have these conversations at home all the time. I think they get embarrassed because I'm a nurse and I don't, it doesn't bother me. So we have lots of conversations about puberty. But he came home after watching the video, it was like a day or two later, and he was in the bathroom putting on deodorant and stuff. And it was different for him. I usually have to remind him. And he tells me, yeah, the video they showed us said we need to wear deodorant. So yeah. hearing it at school from another person and besides his mom kind of, I think, reinforced that. Just one thought. Yeah, because kids can be rude. I know that one of my um, one of my little nephews, he's nine, and he he gets sweaty, yeah. and it's not the cute little puppy dog sweaty anymore. It's like from yeah, you know? yeah, like you stink. Kind of yeah, and yeah. so the kids are like, you stink. You know, they're like he's like, do I need to? And he's got his arm up. Do I need to use the over? Like, so this time, you know, we have to have the talk. So yeah. yeah, but you know, we're, we have to we have to do that. I think we we need to be responsible for um, teaching. I don't want anybody else to ever be res totally responsible for teaching my children what they know about sexuality, but I'm comfortable enough with what I've seen to to you know. To okay, that part. I don't want them teaching about gender and and okay, okay, in different roles and all of that kind of stuff. It mentions I, it in the teaching yeah, guide, it but it does not in the video. They do not discuss gender. None of that. I don't know what we talked about that. At this level, at at this level, this level. Let, let me, me, let me, me right, this. Fifth grade level. Mm -hmm. At this fifth grade level which is, by the way, where the teaks in human sexuality start. There's other health teaks, K through all the way up, right? K through 12. There's health, overall health teaks. But specifically, human sexuality instruction starts at fifth grade. Am I right on that? Uh, it looks like in the update. I think that's right at fourth. Oh, we started at fourth. In the update, and we now have uh, reproductive and sexual health in fourth grade, um, and it says explain changes that occur in males and females during puberty and adolescent and define the menstrual cycle. So that so this forward. would suffice for both, according to the teens. So they get a little bit in the fourth as an intro. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
But you put your point. Yes, I can see the right here. Yeah. How old are kids in the fourth grade? About nine. We have, in the past, we have had this puberty video discussion with fourth graders. I think two years we tried it for two years. And in both of those years, we found that majority were not ready to have a group discussion about this. They just were not mature enough in a group setting. I'm not saying they're not mature enough individually, right? To, because probably if they each one of them, each one of the girls, and I'm speaking about periods, really, um, menstruation on that specifically. If, you know, if a girl came into the clinic and, and I had that one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, they'd be fine because they're terrified, right? And they know something's happening to them. But in a group setting with peers, all nine-year-olds, they're not ready for that discussion. It becomes something totally different. Um, and again, these we're talking about these curriculums. We, I mean, our students, in Forney, I see anyway, have a multitude of resources around them individually. We have nurses at every campus. We have counselors at every campus. We can now hire and included uh, LSSPs, which are the, the social um, aspect of that, right, of counseling for students. So there's just a multitude of people surrounding them all the time for resources when their individual needs come up, right? We would never, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say never, but I don't know any nurse that would ever be like, you're, you're only nine in the fourth grade? We can't say this. You know what I mean? So obviously that, that type of practical learning is constant, constantly surrounding them. Um, but for the purposes of what we are charged with is to come up with curriculum that is good that we feel is good enough to encompass a group setting in this particular situation that's fifth graders and now Stormy has said that that, that did fourth so we can absolutely adopt this for fourth as well because it is the same conversation um, to at least get that started. In the piece for the fourth grade, are they talking about relationships and boundaries and those types of things as well? Currently, that piece is not included in the piece. It's of reproductive health, of reproductive. Well, and, and what, I, what I have here, so the cheeks will come out in six different strands, or I think at fourth grade, it, it might be four different strands. Um, but they only have one strain that is reproductive and sexual health. And in that strain, they do not go down to the depth of defining relationships and looking at what healthy relationships are in that particular strain. It is only two pieces, and that is um, explaining the changes in males and females during puberty and adolescence and then the menstrual cycle. But let me pull up, um, I just put in fifth on, so let me uh, pull up fourth and just double check that what I'm going to do with that. So then my, to even kind of follow up with yours, my question would be where those are at. Because all levels have some type of social emotional learning aspect to it. Those character traits, where we're talking about healthy relationships, kindness, you know, those sorts of things at those appropriate levels, just not where it relates to sex. You see what I'm saying? I understand. Yeah. So it looks like almost all of them have the strain of mental health and wellness, which does go into relationships, not obviously from a sexual perspective. Um, but uh, just talking about that relationships are essential to reaching one's full potential and to talk about what is appropriate to manage, manage your emotions, your reactions, things like 
kind of like an anger management type I was like mental health, like if, if I am struggling with something, what what are what to do, what are some options and a little bit of exploring what you have. So you all brought up great points and I completely appreciate all of this conversation that we're having. I think it's important because it it does kind of, where right at first, you know, like I think everybody, y'all were all like, well, that doesn't do anything. You know, they just do one thing. That doesn't do anything. So your questions brought up the bigger scope, right, of what all the stuff does. But right now, we're just focused on this one little piece. But I love the discussion because now you get to also see the broader picture of what what is being taught and what is happening in the various areas. So I definitely appreciate that. Let me ask you this before we kind of move on. Um, did you like this type of format to discuss these curriculums? So if there had been more people, we would probably have separated into some groups and then and then brought those two discussions together. Um, but this was good and fun because we could just be more relaxed and talk about it. But like we said before, if, if y'all are kind of good with this format of sort of presenting the Cliff Notes version, right? Mm -hmm. And then for y'all to sort of know what we're trying to accomplish and then ask the questions so that we can make sure that we get that back to you, um, then that's probably what we'll do in the future. Again, we will need to adopt something that will align for our next school year. And we'll have to do that by the end of this school year. So as of right now, I don't have the other curriculum materials for the other grade levels to present. But I thought this was a good starting point to kind of let us go, okay, this is kind of the format what we're going to be doing. We're going to look at this, delve into it, ask questions, and move on. So, if I were to ask you right now, after our discussions, would you recommend this program to answer back those teaks for fifth grade? And now we've learned that we should be able to also incorporate fourth for this same one. Uh, for next this school year, next school year. For the interim, yes. For the interim. For the interim, okay. Yes, I don't think that, that should be out. Even for just this right level. Yeah, I don't think that should be out. I think we should try to go for some, you know, the best kind of life. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I would say that we should have that option. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. The different guidelines. And from this one, I kind of get like they're trying to. I know you said they don't put in the video, and I'm just but this, for me, it's more of them promoting that product. Yes, everybody. Oh, Robert Gable. I can see that. They yeah. they yeah. I can see that. Yes. Okay, let's get out into the community so we can bring in more money. I don't did you that Did you ever watch the video? Uh, yeah. Uh, in five years, so yeah. Right, so, so yes. Right, no, I understand. Yeah. I wasn't trying to figure yeah. out the spot. No, I don't blame you, but then, then when I tried to watch the gym, I got the, the one year old five minutes in my last. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, not, it's not a real, it wasn't a real focus, focus. Right. And so, but my concern is, is that even if the video is, you know, how it's, it's going to that part, but the part that is allowing the teacher to read before they go into the video. You see what I'm saying? Those things, what's going to enter to the person that gives the information if you're not with the you Right, right. Yeah. So. No, I can see that for, for sure. For the interim, I, I think, you mm -hmm. know, I'm a little bit. You know, they sure will be able to I'm, I'm telling you, I work with those guys. Kind of like, so yeah. I'm going to figure out who that person is that's in that small that, that 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 area. Say, hey, do you think you can work on something like yeah. that? Because we really need to implement, like she said, those things that are not pushing gender and all this stuff, just straight things, straight factual, yeah. and you know, not the what is. 
the, the idea when I explain it and then if you go out and do something else, then that's that's your personal choice. Sure. But the things that are, you know, that are going right. that's what I think that's what needs to be taught and implemented more so that we have our children that understand better. You you get what I'm saying? I do. And then the parents you know, <laughs> do we have this conversation with our kids, yes, and I read through the life and talking about these things. But like you said, it's something that's gonna go along and coincide with the things that we are teaching ourselves at home. Yeah. Not something that's gonna be completely right. Yeah. Yeah. I love what you said. Okay. So no, no, it's a great conversation. And I, I can totally see what you're saying because it is from Procter & Gamble. Mm -hmm. And they do show that. Ooh, that's, right. why I, that's what I brought I was yes. going to your attention. I was just like, okay, you scrolled it. Yes. And and what's so I was so was tampons, different kinds. The slim is wide. Yeah, it's the whole thing. And what's so funny is in actuality because the nurses teach this. Okay, in fifth grade. Oh. The teachers do not teach this oh. in fifth grade. It's the nurses. Now, I say the nurses, tip, we, we have all female nursing staff, and we have found, I have actually taught both the boys and the girls before. And I have found that when I did the boys video, while, while Amanda said in her house, I mean, being a nurse, you know, dinner conversations are ridiculous. <laughs> so, but but when you're talking, you know, you're you're nurse brown and now we're in a group of we're in a you know room of all fifth grade boys, they're like the video talks, literally, the boys video goes into all of the healthy stuff, right? You're gonna start sweating, you're gonna start stinking, gotta wear deodorant, take back, wash your hair, all these things, the acne, all that. And then it talks about hair growth. Right, you got areas. things are happening there, and then it shows the anatomy of where the hair growth is, and it talks about nocturnal emission. The boys freak out at this point, especially when Nurse Brown. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're like, "Well, hold up. First of all, you have no clue what you talk about. You're like, even though deep down they know that it's already up now." You know what I mean? So, um, kind of going to go back to what you said about, from your perspective, it looks like they're just trying to push their product. I guess I never really put that together until you said that because I've taught, we've taught it for so many years. And it, this program actually, I like because it updates, because it's a downloadable video. So they update it. Um, so it's not like you're looking at the kids from the 70s, you know? Um, so, I mean, we've done those programs before too, but this one's pretty good. So um, they are taught at this grade by nurses, except for the boys. We typically try to get a male role model on campus to do that, merely for the comfort of the boys themselves. <laughs> And a lot of times the girls have really good discussion in fifth grade, fourth grade. They just not. The ones that have already started, they're like in the corner not saying anything or trying to giggle along with the rest because they don't want to admit to anybody they've already started. So, um, but in actuality, the video itself, I think this program does a pretty good job. But until you said that, I was like, you're right. I've never really thought of it that way because of it, like I said, the video. This, 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 you know, this, this is not a CEU for any of us. You know how it's going to be you. We always said, but do you feel like this is what was trying to tell me something? Right. And that's right. I feel like that's what you felt like with that one. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So I, now I think this was great discussion. I really appreciate all that. Stormy, did you have any more to add on your fourth grade strand or no? Uh, no, that's it. No, it's not. Okay. All right, so um, I don't really have a great launch for today, but that I really do appreciate you all coming back and, and having these discussions. It really is important. I know it's kind of a beating and COVID cases are spiking and all of those kinds of things to go over these things, but I hope.
hope that you leave tonight with more of an understanding and an insight from the education side of things of how important it is to have parents' involvement and comments and discussions and recommendations for some of our programs like this, right? I mean, a lot of educators, their hands are tied on what they can teach. You saw that by the teens. You have to teach this. And it's like, okay, how do we do this? What's the best way we do? But with your input, it just helps all around to make sure that we get a solid um, curriculum for certain things for our kids. So we appreciate that a lot. So like we said before, it's not goodbye, it's until we meet again. I just don't know what that day will be just yet, okay? Because our curriculum side of things, they're going to go back and really try to find us some good stuff that will align with these new teaks for us to delve into. Okay? Yeah, so I appreciate it so much. Thank y'all for coming. Make sure that you sign in. I think I saw everybody do that, so I appreciate that. We appreciate y'all so much. Thank you. We appreciate that.